In this video, we're going to discuss the most important golf clubs in my bag and the most important golf clubs in your bag. And we're going to do it now. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson and welcome to this YouTube channel. Guys, in today's video we are discussing the most important golf clubs in my bag for the 2022 season. We're also going to discuss the most important clubs in your bag because guys, the season is fast upon us. It is June in a couple of weeks and I can't quite believe that. So the first most important golf club in my bag, guys, before I go into it, I want you to all get in the comments below and let me know what are the most important clubs in your golf bag in order. I want to know the order. So for me, I start things off on the tee because we always have to hit 18 tee shots. I don't know what that was, I nearly fell over. Because we always have to hit 18 tee shots and depending on the length and difficulty of the course, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be hitting driver quite often apart from the par threes. So I'm gonna kick things off with my driver. This for me is probably the most important club in my bag because I feel like if I can get driver away most of the time, I'm not only gonna score better, which is the whole point of playing golf for most people, but I'm gonna enjoy my golf better which is the main part for me. I love playing golf. It is for me very much a hobby, but I also want to make sure that the driver performs for me as well. Enjoy your golf better. Enjoy it better. It's like a quality of enjoyment. And for me, when I hit drives like that, I'm definitely enjoying my golf better. So the driver I'm using at the minute, guys, I'm not gonna lie, I have still been a little bit undecided about what to put in the bag. Obviously for my job, I test a lot of golf clubs. I got fitted for the TaylorMade Stealth. It is a hazardous 6.5 RDX smoke shaft, nine degree set on standard. And I just feel comfortable with it. I've used TaylorMade drivers for quite a long time. I know the red face has kind of divided a lot of opinion. I don't particularly mind it. I quite like the feel of it and it seems to be performing. That is one of the most important golf clubs in my bag and it is up there at number one. Let's move on and we'll discuss two, three, four and five. So guys, if you have included driver in the comments in your top five most important golf clubs, just comment again and let, I'm sorry, I'm asking for loads of comments today, but I want us to have a really in-depth conversation. Let me know what driver you're using. Let me know, was it fitted? And let me know how old is it? Because you don't always have to upgrade your driver every year to get the most out of it. The other day, guys, I went and bought a Titleist JVS driver from Chroma Golf Club. Oh, stop it. Stop it for 20 pounds. Guys, I'll link that video in the description below and I'll pin it in a comment because it's such a fun video and it really shows how much fun you can have with a 20 pound driver. What's the second most important club? What do you think it is? Might as well comment while you're there, aren't you? So guys, you can see here, we have taken the contours of the fairway nicely and we have about a hundred yards left. Now that is exactly why the driver is an important club because you hit it so often and you have to be comfortable with it. It's funny guys, because last year, this was my favorite club in the bag and I absolutely loved it, but I'm just starting to have a bit more confidence with the driver. So I'm starting to hit it more. What do we think club number two is? Now, usually from here or in the past, I would have tried to hit a full sand wedge and I would have come up short a lot, wouldn't I? Yes. But now I'm sending in a 50 degree guys, and this is a prime opportunity to do this. The flag, as you can see, is at the back of the green. There's loads of green to work with. And how often as golfers would we leave this way short and then have a massive long putt for the birdie? So we're gonna go with 50 degree guys. This is actually a club that I didn't used to use that much until Chris kind of got hold of me, actually hit me with it a few times and said, James, the percentage of you getting up and down or getting close to the green is a lot more with this than it is the sand wedge. So we'll go with this, try and flight it down a little bit as opposed to with the sand wedge, we wouldn't be able to do that. And generally just try and hit more greens from this 100 yard yardage. Oh, how good is that? Be good. Oh, that is delightful. Did you zoom? You didn't zoom in, did you? This is exactly why this is my second most important club. And guys, if you look at PGA Tour averages, if you look at European Tour averages, DP World Tour averages, whatever these other Tour averages are, you will start to see that the players don't generally reach for loft when they don't need to, because the percentages are a lot higher of them getting close to the green or the flag with less loft. 
And this is where, guys, when we talk top five most important clubs, I'm well aware that a lot of people will be in the comments saying all my clubs are equally as important as each other. But for me, I just think there's a little bit of a kind of top tier of golf clubs that I rely on. And if I know I can rely on them, I know I'm going to play better golf. I know I'm going to enjoy my golf a little bit more. Oh, that's just... That's just run out a little bit too much, but I'll take it. Now, it doesn't always go that swimmingly. We can see there that's pitched here and it's just released down that flag just a little bit. Sometimes we might go a little bit too far and we're left with this shot. Now, I get this shot quite a lot and it's a shot that I've been practicing a lot and I'm now using this club. I used to use the 60 quite a lot. Guess what club we're gonna be talking about soon. But for me, the 56 just gives me a little bit more versatility. I can play that ball low with a little bit of check. I can open the face up if I so want to, but I definitely feel like having this in the bag helps me have a much wider arsenal of shots around the greens. Look at that, sit, sit. Oh. Whereas with a lob wedge there in the past, I may have tried to fly that a little bit too far. We wouldn't be flag high and we wouldn't have four foot, four apart. Say if things went even worse than this, and we ended up, say, in the bunker, um, definitely not with that lie. Say if things went even worse than this, and we ended up, say, in the bunker, even out of any bunker, you can see here we've got loads of green to work with, you can see we've not got a massive lip. For me, the 60 degrees, the club that I have been reaching for, and success rate has been quite high with the lob wedge, and you'll see... Go on. You'll see here... That Generally, that's giving me a nice bit of versatility out the bunkers as well, but just making sure that I only use the lob wedge when and where I need to, not using it all the time. Guys, that's four out of my top five clubs already in the bag. What do we think number five is? When I say number five, this doesn't mean it's the fifth most important, because it's probably the most important. And I've waited right to the end of the video to tell you that. What do you think it is, Chris? Putter. Oh, he can work it out. Chris has worked it out. It is indeed the putter. I am using the Odyssey Two Line Las Vegas. I am in love with this thing. It does have the Stroke Lab shaft in it. It's a British racing green shaft, a British racing green grip. And for me, it feels fantastic. I'm going to overlay a load of putts that I have been holding with this on screen now. <laughs> Touch on the wedges again, I think it's important to have an array of wedges with different bounces on them. Obviously with different lofts, so you can hit different distances. But for me here, there's no shot that I don't feel like I can play. That's not to say that I can play it every single time. I try to play it because nobody in the world gets away with that every single time. The putter, however, it's important to know just how many putts you are holding. It's important to know how many you're missing and where you are missing them. And me and Chris have been doing a lot of work on stats, on expectation, how many puts should you be holding, how many puts should you be missing, but just making sure you're not three putting, because generally you'll find even the best players in the world from this distance, six feet, aren't going to hold more than 50, 60%. So if we can hold the occasional one, we're doing quite well. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember, get in the comments below, what are the most important golf clubs in your bag? Yes, I know all of them, but which ones do you enjoy using the most and which ones improve your golf the most? Apart from that, guys, I'll see you all same time tomorrow. Bye.